What is up guys, Top Tier Yu-Gi-Oh here, and today I've got an updated Sky Striker deck profile for the September 2020 format. This latest ban list changed a lot, and while a lot of people are focused on Widow Anchor going back to 3, that was only a minor change. The new list affects this deck in so many more ways, and we're going to get into all of that as we get further into this video. But before we get into the deck list, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. It's a free and easy way to help out. And if you want to be notified of new uploads, be sure to click that notification bell too. But let's go ahead and get into the profile. All right, and so starting with the Sky Striker engine, we have three copies of Ray, two copies of Rose, one reinforcement of the army to search either Ray or Rose, and then one copy of Hornet Drones. So that's pretty much it for your Sky Striker monsters. You want to see one of these in every single one of your hands. However, you don't want to play three copies of Rose because it's just too many normal summons and it takes up space from other cards. I found that this ratio is generally the best. Then for the rest of the engine cards, we have two copies of Area Zero, which can also help you get to one of your Sky Striker monsters. Terraforming the Search Area Zero. And then finally, one copy of Multi Roll. Generally speaking, I'd say this ratio is pretty standard. For the Sky Striker utility cards, we have three copies of Widow Anchor. Once again, this is now at three on this most recent ban list. This third copy of Widow Anchor isn't a huge difference in the deck though, it's just gonna help you see it more often, but we've always had access to it. However, going second though, which this deck does plan on doing in most of the games, it's a huge help because it's another way to bait negations and or just flat out negate your opponent's cards that you're gonna be able to break their board or at least be able to play. So having the third copy does actually help. So I have definitely enjoyed that a lot. Uh, it's, I mean, it just serves so many purposes too. Like it can be defense, it can be a breaker, it can be an extender, it just does everything. That's one of the reasons why it's so powerful. But then we also have two copies of Afterburners and then two copies of Shark Cannon. And Shark Cannon is an interesting one because I do plan on going second in most games and that makes Shark Cannon not as good. Yeah, you know, you're not gonna break a board with a Shark Cannon. However, it is pretty good you know, on, this, on the uh, following turn. So after you break your opponent's board and you're grinding out that win, Shark Cannon is a really good card in those scenarios because a lot of times it's stopping follow-up plays and giving you more cards, like if you take their cards, giving you more things to play with and more ways to extend your own plays as well. So uh, I do still think we want to play Shark Cannon. Another change that you're going to notice from the last list is that I did cut Eagle Booster. And I decided to cut Eagle Booster just because, similarly to the third Shark Cannon, it wasn't good enough when going second against established boards. I felt that in a lot of cases, especially with Dragon Link being as popular as it is, I'm just being like locked out of the extra deck. And in those cases, Eagle Booster does literally nothing. Or if you're playing against Noble Knights and they have multiple negates, and Charles, like it's just difficult to even get to a situation where you get to use Eagle Booster. You need to first focus on breaking that board. And so I felt that Eagle Booster is better uh, not being played in the main deck at least. But I, I still kind of miss it at times. You still for sure miss it, but it's just too bad against established boards. It's just a blank sometimes, so that's why I cut it. But that's it for these Sky Striker utility cards. Only these three. So there's no jamming waves. Again, no ego booster, no Hercules base. Hercules base, I do think is a great card to potentially side, but we'll get into the side deck later. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the Sky Striker utility. Moving on to the hand traps, which is another big change from the previous profile that is facilitated by this new ban list, starting with three copies of Nib. And so last format, Nib was not very good at all because so many of the decks could play around it, play through it, have negations for it. It just wasn't good at all. But with a new ban list banning block dragons, so that gets rid of a deck that could play around Nib, which could play around in a lot of ways. They could summon Herald early, they had Guardian, none of that anymore. They also banned Jet Synchron and O-Line, which is how uh, Synchro Outlets play through Nib. Now Synchro Outlets barely exist, and they also don't have O-Line to play through Nib. And so they got rid of two of the top four decks that used to play through Nib. So that's huge. I mean, that's 50% of the format that used to play ways around Nib is no longer there. So now Nib is really good again. It's decent. I mean, I wouldn't say it's bad against Dragon Link. They can play around it, but you know, it's still really good in that matchup. Like it beats any other hand trap. And then against Infernal Knights, they can kind of play around it to an extent, but it's not as consistent as it used to be. And so uh, I do think that Nib is amazing right now, both against meta decks and against rogue decks. So being at three in this deck, great, great addition to the deck. But then after that, we also have the second best hand trap in the game, Driver, and then the three bricks. Then we also have three copies of Imperm, really good hand trap right now, three Ash, super versatile, and then finally two copies of Effect Veiler. And so 
The effect veiler is pretty much only here for needle fiber and Celine. If I weren't playing those in the extra deck, I would play different hand traps instead. I would probably play like Droll over effect veiler. Droll is not as versatile, but it is more powerful against the top decks like Dragon Link, as well as against Invoke Dogmatica, those type of decks. So I do like Droll a lot, but we're going to see that in a little bit later as well. But this is the hand trap lineup in the main deck. And then finally for the flex spots, we're playing three copies of Mystic Mine once again. This is just a card that would just outright win you games. It's one of the few cards in this deck that by itself, if it resolves, in a lot of cases, you just win. Like a lot of these combo decks aren't playing Cosmic Cyclone or Twin Twisters or any sort of ways to deal with uh, a, a Mystic Mine in game one. And so that's a, a very, very big deal. So I do like maxing it out at three. And even if we need to do more than deck our opponents out, like we need to push, like if you know they have more cards in deck than us <laughs> which does happen at times then we still have ways to play undermine very very well because of hayate because of uh cards like multi-role in area zero it's not very difficult to play under uh mystic mine so three copies of that then we have three copies of triple tactical talents uh triple attack is another really great going second card in this deck and so we have three copies of this we have three mines we have three widow anchors two afterburners all of the hand traps and so this deck is really really good at going second and triple attack is one of the ways we can do that it's great for baiting other negates by activating the uh, take control effect but also just drawing into more cards and when you combine that with the next card which is three copies of pot of desires you really get to see a lot of your deck very quickly like there are some games where you resolve both triple tag draw two and desire draw two and you're just getting into whatever you want at that point and so i am a huge fan of this spell lineup but if you are looking for ways to replace triple attack like if you don't want to play it you don't like it or if you don't have it you could just cut it because this is a 42 card main deck and so you could cut these three and then add in the third copy of valor or some other hand trap that you would like to play or just cut no yeah just cut these three and then add the one Valor, yeah that's probably the best thing to do or there, you know whatever else you want to add you could add cosmic cyclones you could add droplets you could add uh, so many other really good cards this format that you could add to your deck to make it good but you just want to make sure that it's something that's going to be good going second something that's going to be great going against established boards and it's going to help you continue to play uh, even if your opponent full combos so uh, that's pretty much it for the main deck though once again it is 42 cards i opted to go over 40 just because there were so many cards in this deck i wanted to play like i wanted to see the third copies of each of these like i wanted to see them so often that i felt that it was fine to go over 40. i don't think there was anything in the main deck that i'd want to cut just for the sake of space like cutting down by a couple of cards only increased the odds of seeing anything by like a few percents like one or two percent and so nothing in this deck i felt was like i don't want to cut anything really yeah, it's all perfect the way it is, I think, in my opinion. If there were better cards to play, maybe, but these are the best cards. The best 42 cards you could play in a striker deck. Moving on to the extra deck, we're going to start with three copies of Kagari, three copies of Shizuku, two copies of Hayate, one Zeke, and one Kaina. This is it for the Sky Striker engine. You guys already know what all of these cards do. I do sometimes miss the second Zeke, especially with adding Nib back into the deck. I do really like having two copies of Zeke. It does come up because you have that Nib on your board. You're trying to get rid of it. You might not have a multi-roller in Area 0. Or you might whiff on your Area 0, and you really want to get this thing off the board. Zeke is a great way to do that. But uh, I, I do think that space is so tight that one is fine. You're definitely good on one. So that's it for the Striker lineup. And then for the other cards, we have one copy of Hida, one Ningirsu, which I really like a lot because it's another out to Dragoon, out to many other cards that are difficult to deal with this format, does not target, does not destroy, and it can even clear itself to make space for your other Sky Striker plays. It can clear itself or clear other cards, like you can take a Widow Anchored Monster, send that. Uh, there, it's just a really good card overall. And then finally we have the Selene needle fiber and access code play which is once again great in sky strikers we all know this just because we have so we have access to so many other attributes that when you do make this play like you would just uh normal summon hand trap make needle fiber summon valor go into selene selene bring back the valor you're gonna have enough spells then you make access code and with that you're gonna have water light you could have dark fire earth and wind in your grave so you can get all of the attributes in your graveyard so you can have up to six pops with your access code talker it'll be at 5300 attack because of selene 
it, it's a great way for putting damage on board and almost always going for game. And so Hayate twice plus this access code play is over 8,000. That's usually going to be your win con. And so uh, that's really cool. It's also an out to Dragoon if you can negate or bait the effect. You can just negate it, make access code up to 53, and then just attack over the Dragoon. Even if you don't make access code 53, you can almost always just attack over the Dragoon if it's negated. So uh, that's, a, that's a thing too. Access code serves a lot of purposes, but if you don't want to play access code, I think good replacements for it would be, uh, or you, you would cut access code and the Selene, and then I would replace them with the third Hayate and then Link Haribo. And the reason I like Link Haribo is because it's a way to where if you resolve Needle Fiber, you could summon out Valor, go into Link Haribo, and then still go into Ningirsu. So it makes it, it makes it so that your Needle Fiber is still at least an out to Dragoon, if need be, or an out to anything else. Versus having to climb up into a Ningirsu the other way, which would be using maybe like Hida to take, uh, I don't know, an All Mirage or something, or using Shark Cannon to get links from your opponent. This is usually an easier way that depends less on what your opponent's already done and allows you to do it more proactively. So I would definitely do that, but if you also didn't want to cut, you, you, like maybe you don't want to play Needle Fiber either, you could also replace all three with Super Poly targets and then play uh, Super Poly either in the main deck or the side deck. And there's some really good options for targets right now. Like of course you have uh, Starving Venom, which is an Outer Dragoon, you could just use the Anaconda and the Dragoon to go into Starving Venom, or you could use like a Savage Dragon and Dragoon, stuff like that against really good boards. Uh, that's always good. You have Mud Dragon, which is great against a lot of fields. You have Draco Equest. Uh, that's not the full name, it's a Wind... Is it Dragon or Warrior? I forget the type of it, but it's a Fusion Monster, and all it requires is like a Dragon and a Warrior Monster. A Dragon and a Warrior Synchro. Or is it a warrior and a dragon synchro? One of those two. I have the card, but I don't feel like looking for it right now. But it's something you can you can super poly against a savage dragon and a Charles with. That's the whole point. So there's a super poly out to that board. There's a super poly out to uh, dragon link boards. There's a super poly out to most decks. The only issue is if you're going to be buster locked, which is the downside of super poly. And with dragon link being the best deck and it also having a buster lock, that's a little tricky. But it's, you know... It's an option if you don't want to play Axis Code or Needle Fiber. I think those would be the next best things to play. But that is pretty much going to be it for the extra deck. Moving on to the side deck, we have three copies of Artifact Lantia, great against Dinos, great against Invoked, and various other rogue matchups where Banishing becomes an issue. I saw Infernoid the other day, and this would be really good against Infernoid. Uh, but it's really tricky against Dinos actually because we both want to go second. So it becomes kind of a cat and mouse game like games two and three who's gonna go first who's gonna go second are they gonna make me go first and if so do i side going first or are they going to you know switch it up so it's kind of tricky in that matchup but i feel like lancia is great regardless next we have three copies of droll and lockbird which i really like against dragon link it uh it's very difficult for them to play through because if they start with the chaos space they're literally doing nothing <laughs> if they start with star lead c for a black metal dragon you're gonna be stopping them from anything past getting that red md or getting their, uh, you know, their white or black dragon. And so in any of those cases, you're stopping them from using Romulus. And not getting Romulus means they don't have access to a tuner, which makes it difficult to get the needle. It's just really difficult. And even if that happens, they're not resolving Brotar. They might not be getting access to Tracer. It's just, it stops a lot of their plays. It's very difficult for them to play through Droll. And while they still can, if they draw like the perfect combination of cards, like maybe you Droll them, but they draw a quick launch to summon a tuner or you know, stuff like that. They still have ways to play through it, but it's very, very difficult. And a lot of times it's going to stop them from making their optimal boards. So I do like Droll a lot in that matchup. Also good against Invoked because if they're starting with, let's say a Terraforming, you just skip their turn. If you're, they're starting with a Meltdown, you skip their turn. And even if they start with an Alistair, well, at least they're not going into their, their Dogma plays after their Mechaba. So you're guaranteeing that they're only ending on Mechaba, maybe like an Imperm or Punishment or something, but that's fine. So uh, it's really good in that matchup as well. Really a big fan of, uh, of Droll. It can also be decent against Dinos because you can maybe stop like a Fossil Dig or a Terraforming, or even if you do it on Ovi, they're not gonna be able to also resolve Ar Arnimador, Archosaur to search Pill, so or whatever they wanna search to that. So that's pretty big. So Droll is good in a lot of matchups. Big fan of Droll right now. Next we have three copies of Cosmic Cyclone 
which I also love in a lot of matchups right now. Going first, going second. It, yeah, going first, actually. This is one of the few cards I do side when I expect my opponent will make me go first, or if I'm going to choose to go first, actually. Uh, I do like Cosmic Cyclone a lot because it's great against dragons going first, because you're stopping... Uh, you can banish Phalanx when they equip it with Lance, or you can just stop Lance, you can stop Boot, you can stop Ravine if they start with that. Uh, there are so many different cards that you can stop with Cosmic Cyclone that they're not really expecting to play through. And, this, and banishing, it's huge too, so I do like uh, Cosmic Cyclone a lot. It's also an out to the, uh, to the Buster Lock if they go into it, and you're able to negate the other things on their board. So worst case scenario, you can at least uh, get rid of Buster like that. Next, we have three copies of Dark Ruler No More for going second against combo decks. And then finally, we have three copies of There Can Be Only One. And again, this is just great going first. And it's just an auto win in so many different matchups. We have so many matchups right now, so many meta decks that are uh, just one, one type. Like you have dragons, you have warriors, you have gokis, which are all warriors. Uh, you have... Yeah, I think that's pretty much it of everything that's one attribute. Wait, Invoke, Dogmatica are all spellcasters for the most part. You have so many decks that are just one type of monster. And so it's, th this just stops them so much. And it's easy for us to play around too. So uh, th three copies of there can only be one for going first. Just an auto win in so many different games. But that is pretty much it for the side deck. All right, guys, I just wanted to show you guys a couple of test hands just to show you, you know, what the hands look like with this deck, how easy it is to stop opponents, how easy it is to break their boards going second, which is once again what this deck does try to do. You want to go second, break their board, and then, you know, outgrind them and control the game from there. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of test hands. All right, so with this first hand, we have Gamma. So we're off to a good start already. Best hand trap. Well, second best hand trap. Uh, Widow Anchor, get another good card, Afterburners, amazing, starter card in Rose, and then another Widow Anchor. So this is our five card hand, so we'd only have Gamma to stop our opponents. Still a great hand trap, but even if they're able to play through the Gamma, our six card would be, well, our six card would be different because this would take Driver out of the deck, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, so we would still have a lot of cards to break their board with. So we could negate multiple cards with double Widow Anchor. We'd have the Afterburner to also bait one of our opponent's cards or potentially even just destroy it so we could bait stuff with the anchors destroy something with afterburners go into rose uh hayate send something and then continue to get our engine going from there so this would be a great going second hand this is really really good even though we only drew one hand trap just drawing into double widow afterburner rose is good enough so let's go ahead and look at a second hand this deck is also really consistent so I want you guys to also see how consistent it is. Even though it's 42 cards, once again, that makes a very minor statistical difference, not very impactful at all. When you're deck building, the biggest impact on your consistency is going to be the number of desirable cards or undesirable cards in your deck, not the number of cards actually in the deck. I could show you guys the formula for that if you're really interested, but it's not very important how many cards in your deck, unless you're making like five, 10 card differences, but one or two cards, minor. All right, so in this hand, we have Valor, Desires, Imperm, Imperm, and multi rolls our five card hand. So we have three hand traps at least, which is probably stopping our opponent from doing anything too impactful. Then the six card is going to be another Valor, which does kind of suck. We need to see our engine, but we do have the Desires. So if we're able to stop our opponent, they probably won't have Negate, so we're gonna be able to resolve the Desires, unless they have an Ash Blossom, but yeah, hard to account for that here. But let's see what that would get us, so. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we banish the 10. Let's see what we banish, if it's anything good. Let's see. Nothing that's going to stop us from really playing. Two shark cannons, which kind of sucks, but, you know, we're fine. One ray, one rose, one area zero. And then we draw into mine and ray. So ray's going to allow us to play, and mine could just be an auto win. I mean, probably not because we just desire it, so we lose a number of cards in our deck. So it's very difficult to deck your opponent out after playing Desires, but it could be. It, but Ray is the big one. So now we have Ray and multi roll. That's uh, pretty strong. So let's go ahead and look at one final test hand just to show you guys how consistent this is. And once again, that's why I wanted to play those three copies of Desires, which is a change from the previous build because I was only playing two then. Getting that third copy definitely helps out a lot. Alright, so 
in this final hand, we've got one copy of Widow Anchor, one Ray. So we've got Defense, Starter, Area Zero, Desires, and Ash. So we do only have one hand trap. It is only Ash, which is one of the least impactful hand traps, but it is the most versatile. So that's one thing. Uh, it's tough to say if this is going to stop the opponent, but even if it doesn't, at least we have the Widow Anchor to at least start breaking their board. We have Area Zero and Ray, which can kind of get something going. The sixth card is a triple tax, so that's actually really good because now we have two ways to go at the opponent's board between the triple tack and the uh, the widow anchor. We, again, and we also have our engine. We have desires. We have a ton of resources here. We also, if we wanted to, could draw up to four cards between the triple tack and the desires. So that's pretty big. I mean, let's say we drew two here just to see how good that would be. Another starter card, effect veiler. There's just a lot we can do with this hand. Uh, just absolutely incredible but all right guys that's pretty much it for this sky striker deck profile if you guys have any questions comments concerns uh, let me know down in the comment section below let me know what you think about this deck if you're playing strikers or something similar well how's your deck different how's it similar how do you like it how's it been testing for you what are you loving what are you hating what would you rate it uh, again tips tricks suggestions also let me know in the comment section down below if you guys would like to see the entire deck profile just post it at once i did post this on uh on my instagram so if you guys want to see the whole list at once or see everything kind of written out it's on there uh definitely follow on that as well because i do post relatively frequently i post a lot of decks that i wouldn't post on here things that you know are still in the testing stages like i'm testing or i'm posting like you know, still working deck lists and stuff, stuff that's a little less finalized, but I can post more easily and more readily on there than I can on here. And so definitely check that out if you guys have a chance. I'd really appreciate it. But as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.